on the website. So. All right. Well, we're back. Uh, what we were, we were having a problem with it showing on the website, but we, hopefully we've got that fixed now. Uh, prayerfully, we got that fixed, but who knows, okay? Uh, all right, take your Bible as I had you instructed, uh, Matthew chapter number 13. Uh, I want to read to you a passage of Scripture. That's one that's very familiar with us, but it's a message that God has put on my heart today on sowing and reaping which is simply a message on reconciliation to God. Take your Bible, if you say it, like saying in Matthew chapter 13, uh, we're going to start reading in uh, verse number 1. It says, The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and a great multitude were gathered together unto him, so that he went into the ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he had sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Father, take your word, saturate it in our heart. Give us great insights now like we've never had before. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, Elizabeth Barnett Browning, parents dis uh, disapproved so strongly of her marriage that they disowned her. Uh, almost weekly, Elizabeth wrote love letters to her mother and father asking for reconciliation, and they never once replied to her request. After 10 years of letter writing, Elizabeth uh, received a box in the mail, and she opened it, and to her heartbreak and dismay, the box contained all of the letters she had written to her parents. Not one of them had ever been opened. Today, those love letters are some of the most beautiful in classical English literature. If her parents had opened and, uh, and, and read only a few of them, a reconciliation might have been possible. The Bible is God's love letter of reconciliation to you and I, you to, to humanity, if you will. The mystery of a reconciliation, it originates with God. A lot of people feel like that they're going to come back to God. When they're ready, they'll get make up their mind and they'll come back to God. Friends, I got news for you. The mystery of reconciliation starts with God. It is God who is drawing you today. It is God who is telling you that, that he wants you back, that he wants to know you and for you to know him. You see, it is a, it is a, a personal experience that is available to everyone and because it is God who institutes it. Friends, I want you to know this. It is without condemnation that God offers us the invitation to come and be reconciled unto himself. You and I, humanity, we are, are estranged from Christ because of sin. Um, some people say, well, I'm not that bad, but I got news for you. The scripture says that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every one of us has failed in one way or another. And, but God comes to us and he offers us the, 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 the recon, reconciliation to himself. We are separated from him because of sin. And he offers us reconciliation to bring us back in. And it's achieved because of what he did. Now, I want you to stay with me just for a minute. Say, well, Brother Mark, I've heard that forever. Stay with me. Reconciliation achieves what is otherwise impossible. It is impossible for you to be reconciled from God to God apart from him originating it. You can't begin it. Why? Because you are, you are sinful and, and the Bible tells us that our heart is desperately wicked and, and, and it also tells us that, that, that there's none good. No, not one. Our, rec our relationship with him has to be reconciled, but it can only be done so when we respond to the invitation that he has originated. 
See, reconciliation is offered to us by God through his work on the cross. Now, because of the invitation that he has given to us, it is now no longer up to God whether or not we are reconciled to him. You see, it is now through his love letter, the word of God, his love letter to us uh, that was written that we could understand that he wants to be reconciled to us. It is through that love letter that we learn that we have to respond in order to be able to know him. Now, with that being said, I want us to go to our scripture, Matthew chapter number 13. And here's what Matthew chapter number 13 uh, says. And it says, starting in, let's look in verse, uh, uh, start reading in the latter part of uh, verse uh, number three. He's speaking to them in, in parables. Listen to what he said. He says, behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now, I want you to know there has been many messages, and you've probably heard messages about the sower going forth to sow. As a matter of fact, I thought when I first uh, uh, was called to preach, I really honestly thought that the, the very first message that I would ever preach would be on that still, quiet voice. But the very first message that I ever, uh, Lord ever had me to preach was a message on the sower. Now, we've heard many times about the sower, uh, uh, the emphasis and importance it is to go and share the gospel and, and, and not getting discouraged because the, the seeds fell on some uh, by the wayside and, and in stony places and hard ground, if you will, and, 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 and among the thorns. Uh, and we've heard many messages preached about how that we can't get discouraged. But friends, this morning, I want you to see this message as a message of reconciliation and just how important it is for us to hear that message and receive it properly. Do you know how important it is for us to properly receive the message of reconciliation? Let's examine this parable and let's see a few things. Here's what it says. It says, in, in, in verse number four, it said, When he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Now, if you were to look over into verse number 19, you're going to find what Christ said that this parable meant. Listen to what it says in verse number 19. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, that's talking about the word of God, that's talking about the invitation of the reconciliation that he wants to have with you, uh, the, the, the parable uh, uh, that, that we're hearing today. Anyone that heareth the word of the kingdom and understanding it not then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which is sown in his heart this is he which received the seed by the wayside well what in the world does that mean that don't make a lick of sense to me well let me explain when the sower went forth to sow the path that he followed between the little the, his, his, his rows or his patches if you will was a public pathway a road if you will and, and the wayside is what is considered right on the edge of the road where people have walked and, and, and packed a hard ground. You see, many of us hear the word of God and God offers us an invitation of reconciliation, but we never receive it at all. Oh, it'll hit on our heart and, and you know what, according to this, look what it says. He, it says this, it says that, uh, it says that uh, one that heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one. He doesn't understand it. We don't receive it. We don't accept what it said. We don't believe it. We don't follow it, okay, if you will. Then look what else he says. He says uh, uh, this. He, uh, he says the seed is the word of God. In verse 19, it says the word of the kingdom. The, the parable is, is all about the way the ground receives it. So with that being said, look here, let's look again. It says, when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. The fowls came and devoured him. Let me tell you something. If you don't receive the message that God offers to you to freely to come unto me and I uh, uh, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things. Come and I, uh, I find me and I'll give you rest. If we don't hear those things and we don't accept them, it says repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We don't hear that and we don't respond. If we if we hear things like uh, uh, like uh, with, with the mouth confession is made into salvation and we don't receive that, I got news for you. Satan is lurking to where he'll he'll just he'll just come in and he'll steal that away from you so that so quickly that he'll never have a chance to take root. It's like that seed laying on the hard ground that can't get down into it and start to germinate and start to grow. 
Now, I want you to listen to this, verse 5. It says, Some fell among uh, upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up. And because they had no depthness of earth, when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Look, if you will, over into verse number 20, and he starts to answer this. But, but he that received the seed into the stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and the word anon means immediately, with joy received it. Friends, there's a lot of us out there that have heard the word of God. And man, we just, the minute we heard it, we said, yes, that's it, that's it, that's it. And, and it started to grow. Yet hath he no root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when the tribulation and persecution arrive because of the word, by and by he is offended. Listen to me, let me explain that to you just for a minute. God offers us reconciliation. God offers us a relationship with him. And, and we heard that and, 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 and it fell on our stony heart. Our heart, we didn't prepare our heart to receive it. Well, what do you mean by that? We have let every trial, every tribulation, every persecution stand in the way of having a relationship with God. You've let everything. You've let your children stand in the way of God. You've let your husband or your wife stand in the way of your relationship with God. You have let tribulations, persecution, death of loved ones stand in the way of you and uh, your God. A divorce stand in the way of you and God. Do you know what? Well, that it's fell on stony ground. It, you, you heard it. You received it. It sounded good. But because of that, what was in you already in your heart that you wasn't really to uh, uh, turn loose of, Friends, it is soon, soon when the trials come again, immediately taken away. That's what the Word of God said. Now look, if you will, on down through here in verse number 7, if you will. Follow me again. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. In verse number 7, look over into verse number 22. Here's the answer to what it actually means. And he also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the Word, and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. God offers you the, uh, the, 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 the ministry of reconciliation. He wants to reconcile yourself to him and to, life and to fellow believers. But because you're so wrapped up in the things of this world, you cannot find place for God. There's so many people today that you are so busy with life that you haven't got no place. Let me, let me explain to you, if you will. How hard is it for you to devote an hour a day to the Word of God? Woo How hard is it for you to devote a specific prayer time? How hard is it for us to devote time to, 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 to praising God? And after all, he said he inhabits our praise. How hard is it for us to do that? Oh, but wait a minute. We got time to go to every ball game that they've been. But you let them start having a ball game, tell us we can go to the ball game. They're going to have a ball game down at Erd County, up at Carroll County, over at Bowden, wherever. You say we're going to have a ball game, we'll fill the stands up. But I wonder, when God offers you the invitation, I wonder just how much time you give to it. What about this? Uh, uh, what about this? Uh, I wonder how much time we'd have to, uh, when they tell us that, 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 that Longhorn and, and, and Outback and, 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 and Old Charlie's and, uh, and, and all these places where we can go. I had my own boy tell me this week, he said, man, I can't wait for the restaurants to open. I'm going to eat Mexican as quick as it's over. He named a Mexican place, and I won't do that right now. But anyway, he can't wait to go eat Mexican. Friends, I got news for you. If we could only have that much time for God, there is absolutely no telling what kind of work God would be willing to do in our life if we'd simply give him time. God wants us to receive the invitation that he has given unto us. Let's read a little bit more. Look what it said. It said uh, in verse number eight, but others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some 60, and some 30-fold. Listen to this. It's all in the way that we receive the word of God into our heart. It's not about a sower. The Lord sowed the seed. There's been many preachers standing and preach the word. You have heard over and over and over the word of Almighty God. And you know that God is wanting to be reconciled with you. He paid a high price when Jesus went to the cross. 
However, what is up to you and I is how we receive that word. Number one, are we receiving it by the wayside? In other words, are you, are you opening up your heart that you could receive that from God? Number two, are you letting the things of the incidences of life cause you not to let the word of God grow in you? Um, for instance, you become disillusioned, persecution, or maybe tragedy. Then thirdly, maybe, maybe you've let the word of God come in among the thorn. And what do you mean by that again, Brother Mark? You've become so busy with all the other things in life that you will not accept that you need to give God some time. And then thirdly, some of it fell on good ground and it was productive. The good ground is the heart that has opened itself up for God. So what's standing? Is your hard heart? Is your heart hard? Have you got bitterness in your life? Are you too busy? Or are you willing to open up your heart to God and to receive the invitation that he offers to you to be reconciled unto him, that you could know him personally? in the free pardon of sin, that you could know him personally without any, any, anything standing between you and him. Maybe this morning what you'd like to do beyond all else is to, hey, is to prepare the ground to receive the ministry of reconciliation. All you got to do is simply bow your heads and as humbly as you know how, as best as you know how, just say, Lord, I haven't received the ministry of reconciliation. I have not received the invitation to know you the way I should. And I asked him to help you prepare your heart to receive what he offers in invitation that we could come to him and find rest. So I asked you right now, right where you are, just to bow your head. Heavenly Father, as best as I know how, I asked you to come in. Let me pre prepare my heart, God that it would be good ground, that it wouldn't be hard, that it wouldn't be full of bitterness, that it wouldn't be too wrapped up in the things of life, but that it would be open and willing to receive that what you have for us, and that is that relationship with you. Do a work in me like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe you prayed that with me this morning, and I hope that you did. Maybe that you have decided that you want to try God, that you want to be reconciled. And maybe you ask God to prepare your heart. I'd like for you to let me know so I can be praying with you. You can send me a message on Messenger. You can, you can give me a text, 770-862-1168. Or you can go on our website and you can send a, under prayer requests, you can send me a request. It comes straight into my office. Whatever you need to do, I'd like for you to be willing to, to just say, Brother Mark, I did that this morning. And I'm, I am going, I'm going to ask God, I have asked God to prepare my heart. And then I want you to be attentive as you ask God to prepare your heart. I want you to be attentive to what God does in your life that prepares that heart. The opportunities he asked you to put the bitterness aside, to slow down just for a minute, to break up that hard, hardness, and just for a moment, receive him. Thank you for watching this morning. God bless you. Have a great day. Ashley will be back on today at 10 o'clock. Uh, be watching for her as she does our Sunday school. We would certainly love to uh, have you be part of that. There's still curriculum out there you can go and you can click on. Uh, also, uh, uh, be back with us at 11 o'clock. Mariana and Dylan will be on, and then I'll be following up uh, with a message this morning. 
Guys, it's a message you don't want to miss. I promise you. I look forward to seeing you. God bless you. Have a great Sunday morning.